Hi, it's your favorite N-word, Terrence Prescott Barnes. Keep it gentle as you witness the elite of entertainment, leadership, and protection. These are the influencers of humanity at this day and age. From cruise liners to pageantry, to opera, to the magic moving picture square, the life they breathe into mics will have you knowing they stay big. Punches, kicks, body slams, and trigger fingers stay on the battlefields. What they do instills in citizens that they are protecting and honoring that society. Entertainment is a heaven of a drug when done right. They work heavily with the bulletin borders. They are the ones that filter where the supers go, as well as the space farmers. The ones after them enforces their kind of protection so everyone can do whatever the fuck they want. Then I introduce you to a handful of world leaders. Who does more than just be poster boys for said nations and space colonies? They meant it when they swore in to protect from Earth Zero to the beyond. The slaying of mankind and monsters come with licenses to kill. They all know the audacity it takes to kill anything, but they also know the consequences of not killing. Watch your fellow man or you will be the one walking into the afterlife. The leaders cannot have eyes everywhere. They ask all citizens for the protection of your own life. Closed mouths don't get fed. Hammering debt into the utopia-minded people so they can behave like masterpieces nation. I kid. All humans don't deserve magical might. World leaders know that. Too well sometimes cause of what humanoids have embedded in their DNA or RNA. Treachery. Thanks for attending my Terrence talk. Have a shot of Hennessy on your way out and hit a buck fifty on state troopers while you're at it. Cause you're about to cruise through imagination land like never before. Rich white ladies. In this universe, phoenixes are as coming as the sky. You will meet at least 14 phoenix wielders in your life. But regardless of their average, they are all born to be powerful. Power chose these two often. It all began when they were five years old. Being placed in the same school was the initial explosion, inseparable ever since. By the time they were eight, they had a master plan to get around all of the worlds. All up in encyclopedias when they weren't handling their regular studies. Led them to figuring out a way to Edgemere before they would acquire the ticket price. Even as children, Phoenix Wilders will rise from the dead again. So they took their bravery wherever they wanted to. Their parents would have taken them because they have it like that. But ever since they found each other, that's all they needed. Sure, they had other friends, but a light and dark Phoenix becoming best friends changed everyone's world. They met a couple of women in Edgemere on their first go-round. Their first go-round had them in a lot of capital castles, where they saw a lot of capital entertainment. That's the beginning of rich white ladies. When they got back home, they put all of their notes and ideas into a journal, making up a very huge plan for the future, for their stardom to be. They had all the names of the people they could use for the future. Vendor-type usage, so their co-created spaceship could be one for all of the paradises. Crown the stadium. A scepter and a parent spaceship. A black, white, and red pearl candy coated spaceship in the shape of a huge stadium built for the purpose of being a giant music festival. During all 365 days of the year, they concreted their childhood dreams when they were 21. Present day, they are 27. I bet you're wondering how did two little girls come up with a gigantic spaceship crew for music festivals? Well, Little adventures turned to big adventures by the time they could hybrid transform. Handling whatever they could through the super being surveillance program had them all over the universe because if you start off young, you have more control over your future. Because they never said no to high class projects, they met a lot of gnarly, unsavory, and splendidly savory individuals. With them being beyond the lovely, it was easy for them to make friends, but with them being beyond powerful, it was easier to impress them. One of them was a young, clear soldier. His initial reaction to meeting them was, Wow, I love both of their voices. That was just from witnessing them, and they weren't performing. But they contribute their 17th year in life to clear soldier, making it their best year. There was a simple mission, clearing the engine deck of an important space colony of monsters. Side note, this situation, not a single person knows how those monsters got there. 
Yet, Scotty Rebel and Tokyo Diva was ready to play their suppression roles with their twin automatics. Cliff Soldier said screw that. He had take the twins that everyone else was reluctant to go into the battlefield with, and because he did that, they were able to clear out a higher percentage of monsters than everyone else. Cliff Soldier was at a small age of 25, but he was still an expert before and beyond his actual lifespan at that time. What he surveyed was pretty girls with magical might and strategic might. Malleable for the battlefield because they can also resurrect anyone on the battlefield and already at the tender ages of 17, able to resurrect hard to get back cases. Both of their families have strong firearm handling genes. Recoil handling to them is as easy as breathing. Clear Soldier could tell they would be great allies so he stayed in touch with them so he could party with them throughout his life. Side note, every time Clear Soldier goes on vacation, he spends a week on Crown the Stadium. Now let's bring that ceremony to your attention. Unlike several other Phoenix welders, it took them a while to find a baby Phoenix to merge with. Mythical creature scenario and all, have this ceremony emerging a living mythical creature with a zoanthrope. They were trying their entire youth to find one because their parents. One of them was at least a phoenix widder and neither of them went with the ceremony because they didn't want to. Truthfully speaking, their bodies, their rules. Not for Scotty Rebel and Tokyo Diva. But it's so hard to even get a phoenix as an audience. Flying around the sea of stars at will with their flock. Building up nests on the upper levels of galaxies. What have you searching for a needle and a haystack? For a lifetime. They got lucky though. Regardless of them coursing with power, Clear Soldier finally ventured on to the opportunity they've been looking for. A phoenix told him she would give him two baby phoenixes for what he did. Poachers were after her. After her real good. Clear Soldier and his unit saved her, so he was awarded a gift. Rich white ladies made it to his coordinates after changing their schedule immediately in mid performance. Finished the song after they screamed at the pilot to change coordinates and put their special reserve portal welder in their superpower chamber. They came flying hastily into the area to prepare for the ceremony. Said hey to the phoenix that was giving up two babies. Quickly gave Clear Soldier and whichever of his units out there hugs. Pulled out some vodka, pulled out some hot sauce, put one drop in that shot, then tossed it back just to shout, We ready! Because of their dark and light categories, it added a bonus to the ceremony. Because they merged at the same time, it added a bonus to the ceremony. Because more than billions of people listened to their music, it added a bonus to the ceremony. Because of their combat and firearm training, it added a bonus to the ceremony. In this day and age, Scotty Rebel and Tokyo Diva became non-fire wielders that have the all incineration ability. Whenever they put their palms on something, they can ignite it in flames and control how it spreads. They could literally light air on fire and consume an entire region in flames if they desired. Scotty's is black fire, and Tokyo's is white fire. It's a pretty sight whenever they activate, but together, they are heightened art. And to protect theirs, they'll do what Black Rose does and light their entire spaceship on fire. Now you know why. Not even a grimy and space pirates fucks with the rich white ladies. Because they will have your ass up there with a ransom. Scotty Rebel and Tokyo Diva, five years old when they met. Both of Jamaican descent. Scotty is the vocalist, Tokyo is the rapper. They are both galactic class bounty huntresses, helper warrioresses, resurrection specialists, strategists, and one women armies. Dark Phoenix and Light Phoenix. Twilight, 32 years of age, of Cape Verdean descent, grew up with two things steadily on her grind, aerology and theater. Her mind focuses on the art of performance and the art of superpowers. It was her mother that guided her to being a Jackie of all trades, getting all of her super warrior chops from her to the point she had a support system in the super leagues before she turned into a teen. Always with the vocal training, always with the acting training, always with the artistry training, and always with the encyclopedia reading, always with the enhancements, always with the light. Her intelligence lit everyone's tunnel. I mean it. Everyone that has crossed her path gets inspired by her, because all she wants to do is keep it hot 
but keep it protecting. As fast as light moves, as much as her face is out there to the general public, it would be wise to not be a villain anywhere near her. Let a level 5 distress signal go off close to her cruiser ship. Let somebody call her. Let somebody ask her to join her current allegiance. Let a terrorist attack break off close to where she is. Almost can be in two places at once, but no one needs that. But to save anyone, she'll look at them and have light sever everything around them, then take them to safety. She's a queen at saving lives and a she-devil at destroying everything else. Now let's focus on her money-making business. The one that involves dancers, similar to ones of Janet Jackson's Straub SNL performance. The one that involves stadium music. The one that involves niggas ain't shit music. The one that involves pussy popping, pussy throbbing, pussy all over the place music. The one that's a whole journey through the stars. The one that will have you making it rain at the end of the performances. Welcome to the hardest difficulty. The only cruise line or spaceship that offers up non-stop amusement parks, non-stop attractions, non-stop buffets, and non-stop elite theater experiences that will have you wanting to be a theater major. Throughout time, she has made several shows that shows us all of the triumphs throughout time, the ones she finds the most inspiring. This day and age, her show is called Playing With My Playlist, going over a combative story of a girl while all she could do was fight for a better tomorrow. From distractions to distractions to terrorisms to villainy, you will be glued to the entire performance, covering songs like Santa Gold's I'm a Lady, Ava Max's Hold Up, Wait a Minute, Van Jess's Roses, Janelle Monet's Without a Fight, Missy Elliott's I'm Really Hot, Katronada Mix, and Hope Talaz, All My Girls Like to Fight. Been contributing to the masses by telling little girls, it's okay to punch a boy's lights out. It's even okay to end a boy. All in all, to tell everyone, humans are for one another, not another. Definitely not below another. You've been warned. She's the owner of, screenwriter, producer, and stage director of the Hardest Difficulty Cruise Liner. A galactic class warrioress helper, aerologist, performing artist, and one-woman army warrioress. Her superpower is light. Quality. Age 35. Of Colombian descent. Hails from the house of Zayana. A remarkable lineage known for surviving magical storms like no one else because of their explosive qualities. Peep her code name. She can absorb most concussion blasts. A lot she will never absorb again because they don't carry backlash properties. She can use someone's forces as if they came from her to ruin any plans they have made. It's beautifully impossible to arrow roll your way around her on a battlefield. Better come ready to perform some Death Quan Do. This pretty girl took the entirety of the art of war and made a version of it for herself. From all of the pageants she has mastered, the best bouquets come from fellow heroes. Collects them so she can have a vegetative will to replant them in her garden. Garden so huge, you would think she has been taking the heads off of villains longer than her natural life. And that's a shout out to her style of quality control. She's a galactic class one woman army shiro, strategist, helper shiro, and annihilation shiro. As well as a galactic class actress, pageantry artist, host, video jockey, DJ, and reality personality. Her superpower is explosion. Voxius, age 34, of British descent, hails from the house of Thedev. When his powers came into fruition, he leaned his head back, closed his eyes, and let out a huge shout that tore the roof off of his abode. As he furs, hybrid transformed into his griffin form. Parents were like, Edda boy. With an appropriate quiet applause, then his father was like, yep, was right to not have him in school today. Dead day. A voice been big ever since. So big, it's been vortexing spirits of big voice super beings of yesteryear. One of them happened to be named Warnotic, a monster god from Edgemere, of the Ikruzo species, the ones that look like real slime aliens with big eyes, bodies shaped like worms, and can mold into whatever they think of, main body having terraforms. 
rarely shows his true self, but is steadily in the form of a cloak. When he heard Voxia's voice at the tender age of 17, he heard himself from eons ago when he was still alive, as pure as the sun bouncing off of the water below the cliff he was singing from. The more he sung that day, the more the sun rays bounced off of the water below and crept up the cliff above. His eyes were mad closed at the time, but he eventually started to glow and Warnotic came floating from the clouds of Edgemel. Voxius never knew he had a companion until months later. Warnotic had to expose himself to see if he could sing the note sheets he summoned to his desk. On that morning, he spent his vocal training time singing the new sheets that were dropped off on his desk by a friend. By the end of their singing, his abode was surrounded by several undercover guys of Edgemer, been pulling audiences like that ever since. He's a galactic class one-man army hero, strategist, helper hero, and sanctuary hero, as well as a galactic class show opera performer, theater performer, stage performer, and vocal professor. His superpower is Sound Griffin. Euphorium, age 35, of Taiwanese descent, of the I Know Everyone list. He is considered the best filmmaker of today's times. Ever since the day he created a camera and boom mic out of his fantasy powers, he has had intricate ways of catching absolutely everything he considers art worthy. Started off as a cameraman for his junior high film squad, made his first feature film by the time he was 18. From all of the teen heroism he was performing, it made it so that he would figure out every perfect angle for every scenario. It's how he became such an important hero for the times. He started archiving everything that happened for the sake of recording history perfectly so that anyone wanting to follow in his allies' footsteps can see how they became so admirable. This secured the fan base and the actual basis of why so many people made it to the watch list and have yet to leave. They gave him an opportunity to make a movie he has always wanted. Again and again. A movie about a woman that plays Tanache's Remember When as a lure to captivate anyone depressed. As they walk towards the sound, they walk into a new dimension, where they will end up in their 17-year-old bodies again. This is the umpteenth time the poltergeist has done it, and it's simply her amusement, as they try to assemble and restart life wherever they end up. Time capsules in that world will prove that it has happened again and again, but this new lure group will simply not have that. They will keep it together by killing tyrannically inclined individuals that like to manipulate so they can live out the rest of their days in a world they cannot escape. Then find a way to kill the poltergeist. Euphorium started filming of this movie he wrote when he was 13, at the age of 23. It was done being produced by the time he was 25 and won hella accolades for making a movie about the protection of the Utopia Protocol that wasn't directly connected to the Utopia Protocol. So many awards he won for the movie, and all of it was deemed impossible without who he cast it for it, and how he had it filmed. A magician put several spells together to turn the cast back into their 17-year-old bodies for the filming of this movie. Indress, Blaze, Zero Skies, New Genesis, Awesomeness, Darche, Thrillist, Zeus, Cuerva, Zeophany, Silver, Metalhead, Scotty Rubble, Tokyo Diva, Sharday, Vovisia, Voxius, Quality, Twilight, and Mad City were unbelievably casted for the filming of the movie. Through all of the epilogues of those two years, they still made it happen, going in and out of time magic just so they can help their friend Euphorium. In turn, turned Indris, Blaze, and Twilight into Academy Award winners to the point, five years later, the traction of the movie turned Euphorium into the best filmmaker of all time. He's a galactic class filmmaker, cinematographer, videographer, screenwriter, film producer, theater producer, and director. That's his primary job. Secondarily, he's a galactic class helper hero. His superpower is fantasy. Vire, age 35, of African-Italian descent, hails for minding everyone's business, even her own, landed her with a board commissioner career to where she masterfully spends her time learning the ins and outs of aerology over the battlefield. Over time, she has strategically put together teams that have saved more than just the worlds. 
Because of her, everyone has been able to save time, money, resources, food, technology, and a whole lot of civilization. And I mean a whole lot. It's gotten to the point that everyone on the watch list will directly contact her for ultimacy reasons. Hell, nowadays it's so bad they be asking her directly to come to the battlefield. Usually, bulletin board operators don't have the magical might to be on a battlefield for the betterment of tomorrow. Vira is one of those with the right educational credentials that complements her super being prowess. It's because she's in possession of two barbarian spirit swords that were once dragons. They have the magical might to change earthly terrain to however they deem fit for their holder to survive the battlefield. From floating debris to move someone or bury someone to creating stairwells to heaven to dividing terrain to flattening surfaces, Vire can literally change the battlefield. She's head of Galaxy 10's board commissioner system. A Galactic Class 1 woman army, Warrior S. Strategist, Sanctuary Warrior S. Annihilation Warrior S. Gundam pilot and helper warrior S. Her superpower is Emerald Dragon, and her Gundam is named Ninosharum. Zugasan, age 35, of Arabian descent, hails from the house of Zugasan, proudly wears his family name because he's a space former. Space formers are considered a prized career to have because they directly impact all lives of the Sea of Stars. They collect rations from forms around the planets and forming planets, then deliver them safely to the coordinates of space colonies. Never a dull moment, and they get a free ride to experience the humanoid spear. No one, and I mean no one, harms space formers, not even the grimiest of space pirates, all because they make sure food is safely sent to every corner of the worlds. No one, and I fucking mean it, goes without food nowadays because of space formers. With him being a rainbow wielder, he also has seven elements he can use to defend himself if need be. Whenever he's out hunting bounties, he has enough strategies to be a space survivalist as well. Overpowered, oversmarted, and over-resourced makes him look entirely good, but there's only one person in the sea of stores that can make him stop his clever busyness. Euphorium. Even calls him his codename outside of his superhero persona, but his relationship with Euphorium made it so that he has a spot on a watch list. He's a galactic class space former, bounty hunter, and helper warrior. His superpower is Rainbow. Gritty, age 31, of Scandinavian descent, hails from the house of Kagei. Back when humans were finally allowed to research the Edgemere historian collections, they learned of the intelligent species called stars, and that's what it's in. The ones that are humanoid and vessel with flesh that is transparently full of stars with a giant three-dimensional five-point star that floats in their head space. That's their brain. That's the only visible organ of theirs as their eyes, lips, and mouth appear transparently full of stars. A very ridiculously magical intelligent species they are. To honor them, somebody decided to make a pirateer's force in their honor. And yes, they still exist in Edgemer but coming across one that does their natural appearance is rare, but they are identified as stars on registries around Edgemere. If you're respectful enough to one, they'll show you what they look like, and no, they cannot change color at will. Burner agents spend a lot of time spreading fires to purify anything in detriment of mankind. These pirates hold no fire back, whether they help out heroes, warriors, or villains. Holding back is never an option. For what they take are everyone's secrets, so they can ignite a flame of no return whenever mankind comes across something they haven't met yet. No, they do not use any of the secrets they acquire against the organizations they come across. Power doesn't come from exploding a weapon against its creator. Power comes from cultivation. The way they use secrets turns their spaceship into a weapon of mass destruction. With the alien invasion happening, this will be their seventh time using a weapon for mankind. Greedy is currently their top agent. She's one of the very few characters who is on the I Know Everyone list. She's a commissioner of Burner Agents of Stars. Galactic Class 1 Woman Army Shiro, Annihilation Shiro, Gundam Pilot, and Strategist. Her superpower is Astronomy. Her Gundam is named Zenith Andromeda.
Brazaca, 31 years of age, of Brazilian descent, hails from the house of Capernia, in a land of imagination. There was a plan created by all of the super guilds, purposely to fight against any Goliaths. This plan turned into a protocol that is often used against Curse 5555, the one that haunts all of the stars as if he's one himself. Throughout existence, all atrocities of millions of death have one thing in common, too much spiritual energy. With so many spirits being ripped from their vessels, the Anacolis Guild Coven created a spell to harness all of the atrocity to meld into whatever the machine wants. This is how mankind was finally able to create Goliaths in outer space. Half of their spaceship is designed to be superpowered chambers, so that whenever it's time to, they'll come take care of Curse 5555 or whoever decided to leap into bounds into the beyond to become so fucking Goliath again. Humans will cower at no god because of the Anacolis Guild, but any other time they are quietly wreaking havoc whenever they want to. Brazaka is their biggest, strongest, mightiest noise, steadily in the back pockets of villain kind because the Anacolis are still the only humans with a weapon strong enough to counter Curse 5555 whenever no singers are around. When you're on the do not touch list, why not do whatever your black heart wants? She's a commissioner of the Anacolis Guild, Galactic Class 1 Woman Army Valina, Annihilation Valina, Gundam Pilot, and Strategist. Her superpower is Ice Serpent. Her Gundam is named Anacolis Soldier 27th. Clear Soldier, age 35 of Overman, Indian descent, hails from Mevatel Zero himself. He is the next one millionth Overman, a species from Los Navig dimension, home to Galaxy 7. The special thing about this humanoid species revolves around the four dots on their eyes and how every million born will be born godlike. Basically an overpowered mess to be, but Clear Soldier cleared that away at a young age all because Dr. Rugby saved him. When he learned who he really was, his powers were permanently under control. They call him Clear Soldier because he had cleared the battlefield out. With lunch so much ammunition, Ikaruga fails in comparison. You can catch him in the most mundane scenarios of the unknown, saving lives of very important individuals. Survival of the fittest is best example by him, and that's an ode to how Gundams obliterate anything. If it wasn't for his aerologist of a mother, inseminating herself with Mevatel's sperm, he wouldn't exist. If anything, he'll ask people to thank his mother before thanking him. He considers her to be the absolute best human to have ever existed. All of her scientific findings holds information for the betterment of tomorrow, especially with how she concocted getting pregnant at the right time in hopes of creating another great hero for mankind. With him being one of the rare cases of a millionth overman being born from a millionth overman, he was born to be universal. He's an army general of the 7th Canada Cavaliers, Galactic Class One-Man Army Hero, Annihilation Hero, Gundam Pilot, and Sanctuary Hero. His superpower is Gunpod. His Gundam is named Clear Golem. Kaotris, 35 years old, of Lebanese descent, hails from the house of Uwani, a house that devotes their life to the new Fire Dai Dynasty, a militia specific to a ton of humans that are zoanthropes of insectoid variations. She's a firefly wielder, whole family as well, but she made herself special throughout time by trying her damnness to create light out of dark with a splendid combination of powers that are basically light versus dark. It was something natural to her. To be able to see, brawl, protect, and live in both light and dark. Her time with the Super Being Surveillance Program served everyone well as she eventually made invisible flames that can spread like the wildest of fires. Then learned how to bury those flames that turned her into Chaotris, the woman who's a whole fortress of chaos for the virtuous side of humanity. With how she devoted her life to becoming overpowered, she made it so that she was completely stronger than everyone else of the new Fire Die Dynasty. It's her new style of firing that it have them all dying. Ever since she has taken the helm, they've been happily roaming to see her stars for the next big power blue.
backed up by her outrunning, outpowering, outsurviving, outlasting every single one of her comrades to curb her magical might. We want that. It's what the elders of the dynasty said when it was time to, and that time was when she was 31. She's the head of the new Fire Die dynasty. Galactic Class 1 Woman Army Shiro, Sanctuary Shiro, Gundam Pilot, and Strategist. Her superpower is Fantasy Firefly. Her Gundam is named Camarilla to Fear. Galagos, age 35, of African Cuban descent, hails from the house of Salazaris. He's the youngest of three, was also born with a deformity when comparing his ether system to his brothers. They had no trouble with tapping into their mentism powers before puberty, but Galagos did. No matter how much of the same power training he did as his brothers, he still couldn't tap into his powers. He was 11, right before he hit puberty, when he gained access to the Super Being Surveillance Program, changed his mentism form to Gundam, all because he found some mutagens and stuck all 13 of them in his arm and pumped them until there was nothing left. That concoction changed his DNA RNA makeup for the better. He never heard the Android voice that's attached to his metism form until that, and when he heard what his family experiences, he told it to change the Gundam. From then on, he has been in control of absolute power. All of it. He stopped losing things but retained the monster that was created from losing said things. It's impossible to feel what he feels, but he did what he had to do to get like his brothers. Get like his father. He kept losing more and more of the connection with his family the longer he couldn't tap into his powers. All of the memories around not having that connection turned him into an unforgettable wrecking crew of a single Gundam pilot. He's the fleet commander of the Oralon Chaotix Forces, Galactic Class Gundam pilot, one-man army hero, annihilation hero, and strategist. His superpower is Hydromatism. Matism form is Gundam. His Gundam is named Exterminator Hydrox. Promesis, age 35, of Taiwanese descent, hails from the house of Weihao. His mother used to tell him that the perfect recipe involves ultimacy. Achieve it and the world is yours. To be ultimate is the life right. Being able to do anything you ever wanted at the drop of a dime. Aspirations for that kind of life was in his crosshairs from the jump, embedded in his DNA RNA because of hearing it so much before he even left the womb. Records have it, the watch list is designed because of such things, but what makes him the number one Gundam pilot of today's rankings deals with luckily having pollution as a superpower category attached to mentism. If you ever thought the smog over LA was annoying, he can concoct air, even in space, they will infiltrate oxygen systems for the ultimate worst. There is nothing as frustratingly frantic as not being able to breathe and taking that away from other Gundam pilots opens up all of the air for him. Him and his fleet literally have zero problems when having to deal with humans or monsters. He's the fleet commander of the Prime Brigade. Galactic class Gundam pilot, one-man army hero, annihilation hero, and strategist. His superpower is Matism Pollution. Matism form is Gundam. His Gundam is named Summer Council. Arcarios, age 39, of Japanese descent, hails from the house of Egurui. He grew up being a happy cachet of nothingness, because that's all that would be left. Father was so fucking proud of him tapping into his powers as a kid that he cried. Ugly cried. Just once, then the rest of his life, he lived with a huge-ass grin on his face at all times. His life was simply lovely, but Arcario's life wasn't. In order to stand out in this world, you have to be non-stop with it. That's what he's been doing. Spreading wings to spread explosives across battlefields until there's nothing left. Taking strategies from humans, Wisp, Gundams, and other artificial intelligence sources allowed for him to bring detriment to villain kind from all directions. Even unfathomable directions of not fucking around and finding out, but fucking their sentiment to nothing. Anyone on his crew can attest that he never uses the same strategy within a month. Because if you stay ready, you don't have to survive. You can just obliterate.
He's the captain of the Trophied Wings forces. Galactic class Gundam pilot, one-man army hero, annihilation hero, and strategist. His superpower is Armada Wings. His Gundam is named Glow Trion. Captain Faze, 39 years old, of Creole descent. Hails from the house of Thunder Rule. So, growing up, he spent all of his time challenging every single overpowered powerhouse to a one-punch contest to see who has the most strong output from now. Always talking about, if you wind up, you lost. Just to see if he can, at any given time, give as much power as possible. Even trained in the middle of slumber sometimes to make sure the measurements of his fists going through walls stayed the same. Gaining data on his own prowess so he can ultimately teach villain kind lessons throughout his lifetime. As hard as he fucking can at all times. Nigga turned into a legend by the time he was 20. Ben had developed ways of securing spiritual energy that will forever follow his fortified muscles. So that he can knock heads clean off of their shoulders. Knock a monster's limbs off. Reflect projectiles. Reflect bullets. And to break anything willing to punch him at the same time. It's so beautiful seeing a hardcore man's arm turn into a noodle after he connects a punch with Captain Faye's punch. All them bones turn into dust, then get liquefied by blood. Their whole recovery process has to be magical. Now imagine how he devalues machinery with his fist. It's so, 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 so gloriously beautiful. Captain of the Hydedian Order. Galactic Class One-Man Army Hero. Sanctuary hero and helper hero. His superpower is dream. Cravery, age 39, of Mexican descent, hails from the house of Barreto. Sometimes his parents used to look at him and feel nothing. They had to ask doctors about it. Then aerologists explained to them that he has one of the best supernatural abilities known to man. The fear me not ability. The one that makes him know to absolutely everything, even sensors and surveillance cameras. He has been milking the ability of solid invisibility since he knew what kind of world he was brought into. Never not taking advantage of never being deemed a threat led him down so many paths. One of them taught him that if he backed up the ability with magical might, he could literally have a free ride through life. With him already being a walking cheat sheet. He figured he would go to all of the places everybody is warned to not go to. All the way packing. From Edgemere to who knows where, Cravery filled his craving need for power. So that by the time he was 23, the 10 finger discount would be his for a lifetime. Been guiding around Velenkind to the ultimacy ever since. Lastly, the Tomorrow Order was a militia group he had the funds to create officially, legitly, and contractually. It's his and there's nothing anyone can do to stop his license to kill. He's the captain of the Tomorrow Order. Galactic class one-man army villain, sanctuary villain, and helper villain. His superpower is fantasy. Loon Ages, 34 years old, of German descent. Hails from the house of Vec Hickory. Being born to be a gunpowder wielder could lead to a lot of great paths. His was strictly for the betterment of humanity. While all of the power that's constantly coursing throughout this universe, he wanted to stay true to virtue. All because he fell in love with sweet cold treats. Starting with cereal, started again with ice cream, started again with slushies, then started finally with margaritas. For the sanctity, innocence, and nostalgia of it all, his heroism is rooted in being able to safely order something sweet and cold to help take the load off. Very simple, right? Right. His career as a militant commander isn't simple at all. So complex it'll make you wonder how they get around so secretly when they are known for wearing their bright red berets across the stars and severing villain kind while at it. The ebony hot ties love the color black and it looks slick from shades to toes, but it's their bright red beret a lot of comrades and civilians tend to think of for years on end. What a body that never gets tired. Loon Aegis is always loomed up to release his entire cachet of need be, with about 50 strategies around each munitions type of his arsenal, 
His 100% capacity constantly foes villain kind of the old, the new, and the fantastic. Then zeroes out the strategic rage with something sweet and cold. Captain of the Ebony High Tides, Galactic Class One-Man Army Hero, Gundam Pilot, Sanctuary Hero, and Annihilation Hero. His superpower is Gunpod. His Gundam is named Asarani Aegis. The nigga in the mask, age 35, of African descent. Actually, let's take a different route through his story. One, mother died mysteriously. Two, father was murdered in front of him. Three, put two and two together to realize that his mother was murdered too. Four, Chip gets real ridiculous on his shoulder. Five, unforgiving with the anger but not disrespectful with his actuality. Six, Everyone understood. Keep in mind, he has been in the same town his whole life, same people his whole life, under the same organizations his whole life. Enter an Acruzo, an ancient intelligent species from Edgema, embarked on his journey through the real world before universe hopping. Standard journeying around the 13 galaxies until they feel comfortable with meshing into new societies. When he got to go to Chow Chow, he immediately noticed cultish behavior. One of the main things they are told to look out for on their journey. Actually, it's number one. Let me stop bullshitting. Cult behavior is a no-no and had been told to skip town if you come across it. He wanted to, but he was a benevolent citizen, not just a citizen. In order to save the sector of their space colony, he had to find the sources of this cult. Ended up finding out it's just a source. Because the nigga in the mask was born with compelling eyes which would have been managed, because if he would have known, he would have been able to not command everyone to do what he wants while he's mad, and they are looking into his eyes. He had no idea and never realized the entire town always did what he said because he was always angry because he knew his parents were murdered. When Cal Vizure finally got to the nigga in the mask, he told him what he could do. He immediately did it to Cal Vizure, because he also told the nigga in the mask that he's a guide on his first journey. That guy lost a lot of time because he let his guard down and even guys cannot stop compulsion once they take away their protection, via it being a god ability. The nigga in the mask got out of him what he's been wanting his entire life. More power, more power, more power, some weapons, and more power. By simply asking Cal Vizure, out of your entire life, what has been the most detrimental strategy a single super being has had and what would make that strategy worlds more dangerous? Fucking great question, right? Anyway, Cal Vajor was his cheat sheet because the nigga in a man's superpower is imagination. And we all know if you can thank him, you can manifest it. Cal gave him several magical totems of massive magical might. The nigga in a man's morphed all of those items into mask. Those masks are the reasons why he's such a one-man army super being. Been a peace crusader ever since he crusaded peace into his membranes. Revenge for his parents' deaths resulted in the deaths of hundreds. Everyone in the organization died because of him, then started chiseling away at other villainous organizations, declared that would be his life after finally being able to let go of their rage. But to bring it back real quick, Cal lost nearly 23 hours all because the nigga in a mask immediately said, You are mine until I say otherwise. Cal had no control under the compulsion and was forced to forget the magical items he forcibly gave up. When he finally came to, they ended up in the exact same spot, per Cal's god abilities, then was told to forget all of that ever happened. With him being a god, he simply permanently deleted those memories of helping a young man out, turned that young man into an overpowered and overzealous watchlister. The Nigga in the Mask, Mask Collection 1. Red Bunny Mask Perfect Fire Manipulation Capabilities 2. Blue Kangaroo Mask Water 3. Green Beaver Mask Vegetation 4. Yellow Wasp Mask Wind 5. Purple Helmet Android Mask Psychic 6. Orange Dragon Mask Metal 7. Black Dolphin Mask Phasing 8. Stop sign mask. Freezes anything he looks at. 9. Yield to sign mask. Everyone and everything pays attention to him. 
10. Ridiculously large incognito magenta shades. Perfect ray manipulation capabilities. This is his most used mask. The reason being, he can summon rays of massive destruction from any direction up to 200 yards from his distance. His favorite. 11. Cardboard Box Mask Gives him an x-ray view of whatever he's looking at, even living things. Great for discovering weak spots of structures and things. 12. Kiss Pattern White Burker Regeneration Capabilities And 13. A Hot Pink Ski Mask Turns Everyone Into a Track Star You're Welcome Everybody Get Out Except for Him Gun pointed at Unso, his second favorite. He's a highly acclaimed reality personality, galactic class peace crusader, Gundam pilot, and annihilation warrior. His superpower is imagination with the four categories of morph, light, sound, and fear. His Gundam is named Tornadus XVU. Agre, 35 years old of Caucasian descent, hails from the deceased of Heavery. Known as the last living of their bloodline, he was pronounced lost in space around the time Chris 7777 was identified. He was considered one of Careless Lee's closest allies, when in fact they were the closest of lovers. Him being an Arrowall Ordnance Lord and her being a master spellbinder always made a heaven of a team that was unmatched by any other during their time. 35 was when he was frozen by Careless Lee. After finding out that she's pregnant with his seed, then squatting their son out. Led to him and the son being froze for a very long time. Before all of that twisted love happened, he was Bumper's human prodigy. One of the very few humans throughout time that could equate to the magnificent output of an Edgemite. He was feared from the real world to the beyond and there was no one that could impress him but carelessly. They held the top positions of the watch list in their time. Held them up and down. All around, too. Had all of the super guilds tore up from the floor up to the beyond. Had all the children around the stars trying to get like them. There's no telling how many times either of them were used in relevance to conversations, to topics, to podcasts, to newscasts, to battle rap, to threatening someone, to threatening thousands, to history books. There were even the heads and butts of jokes. Life was so drastically different back in 7777. He's a galactic class arrow ordnance lord, Gundam pilot, one-man army warrior, helper warrior, and bounty hunter. His superpower is Ice Lion. His Gundam is called the MPOs, short for the mosh pit of outer space. Think about it. Carelessly was successful with having it stated as lost in space too. It's sitting pretty on her spaceship. Mags about a magical veil she has over the spaceship. He understands as much as carelessly told him about the situation as much as artificial intelligence can. He holds no negative sentiments against carelessly because Agre is technically still alive. Moving along. Power Depot, 39 years old, of Chinese descent, hails from the house of Chao Hao. He was always with the smarts and with the shits. Always a little brave heart who wanted nothing but to keep fighting. He had a vivacious vessel getting ready to accept a Gundamatism form of electricity. He knew his life would be in the stars, merrily prepared always for a chance to hold one in his hands. It's crazy to have such a dream, to hold a star in your hand, but he felt like doing it since he was yay tall. Cannot happen unless you're an astronomy wielder. Found that out in an aerology class. Instead, he developed a need to hold humanity in his hand. With his dream shifting to such a lovely thing, it kept him happy. Being a leader is in his blood, but when he started developing a desire to be a prominent leader, he complexly became more powerful. History shows that leaders have to be powerful in mind, vessel, and spirit. No need for that bullshit we used to call living in the 21st century. Leaders are sacrificial in order to protect everyone in a whole. There's something he'll do. Has the entire population of Asteriosis. Yeah, that very important space colony. The first space colony to perfect artificial ozone technology. That now is installed on most space colonies so that humans can be human even in outer space. As I was saying, 
as the entire population of Asteriosis shook. As a leader of such a space colony, why you got everyone scared of you on there? Even the galactic forces. Power Depot is very well known for perfectly wiping out threats instantly. Oops. Nah, not him saying oops after obliterating threats. My bad. Not my bad. Nah, that's not what a world leader should be saying. But what you will know, Power Depot has kept Asteriosis safe since the day he swore in to protect it and its people. He is now within the time frame of his 10-year anniversary of holding that position, with still blanking fuck-up evil kind instantly disregarding if innocence sees it or not. From happily smiling with his eyes closed and rubbing his tummy after a huge lunch with family and friends to say, Ooh, we that were cooking that time, boy. But let me tell you about the first time I hit up a buffet. Everyone laughs, then a threat shows itself. Not a big old brown house, strong backed, eyebrows having muscles too, brick house ass man, severing someone in half with his fist, then hurriedly saying, No, 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 everything is okay. Just close your eyes and turn around. We'll have this mess cleaned up real soon. That switch flipped, didn't it? Yeah, ho, from his mouth. If you got it, give it. He wastes none of his super being talents. He's the president of the Asteriosis Space Colony, galactic class helper hero and Gundam pilot. His superpower is electric matism. Matism form is Gundam. His Gundam is named Grillo Gather. Ex Viper, age 37, of German descent, hails from the house of Zabris begrudgingly hailed from that house majority of her life. She was born into a family that upholds the development and protection of males more so than anything else. You understand. The only girl of her generation, the fourth child, was barely given attention. She turned into what she needed growing up by the time she was 10. The only thing she wasn't told no to or about was money. Using that resource alone had her traveling around until she found the river of swords. Being told the earlier in life you find it, the better your gift will be if the river chooses you. It chose her five times because the lack of attention she was getting from her mother, her father the king, and her three brothers. The five swords were all night type swords. Instead of wielding them like a set, she had them blacksmithed into a spear. Enraged certain, made from having to use ray energy as a means of severing the powerful enchants of each sword, so it can be reforged into a masterpiece that will grow with her for the rest of her life. The five spirits of the swords were mock spirits of a family, giving her a sense of love she needed, and this kind of love was giving and beyond. The secrets they would tell her were worlds more beneficial than any compliment they gave her about her might. What X Viper has done with her gifts outshine all three of her brothers combined. Their king only respects power because that's how he was chosen out of his generation. His sons failed in comparison to ex Viper's many skills of blowing the entire fuck up. In order to protect our resources, the people in the land of Zabris can do it from miles away just in case, and there's no real reason to have all that magical might because Zabris has no national enemies that would bring up battlefields, but to ensure its continued existence under the house of Zabris, Ex Viper took a book out of the Fifth Treaties Library. Not one of sacrificing her lineage, but one of understanding the danger capacity of being a warrioress that can use any superpower and capitalize with any kind of weapon. Any. She has a lovely X crossed in all boxes of a warrior's rep sheet, all because her overall religion is I. She's the queen of Zebra's nation, a planet Arox, Solar System 9. Galactic Class 1 Woman Army Valina, Annihilation Valina, Helper Valina, Sanctuary Valina, and Strategist. Her superpower is X Serpent. Handsome X, age 37, of Cambodian descent, hails from the house of Oken Jakun. His entire life leading up to his 27 year life was surrounded by war times. Aozen Nation was under no ruler at the time he was conceived. Many houses tried their luck with democracy, didn't work. Tried their luck with power, didn't work. Tried coming up with new ruling systems, but that shit ain't work either. 
For many people that understood the Utopia Protocol, there was more drama ruining any kind of uniting. But trails that led to deaths is the statement. It's in the unrealism of how many people had to survive by any means necessary. Yet, throughout all of the war, a young, handsome ex kept it handsome. For some odd reason, regardless of the many life-threatening injuries and the lives he had to take, he still came out a good guy with a heart of gold. Fully understood what kind of world he was brought into by the time he was 10, but no amount of chaos could ruin his innocence. He has always wanted to protect it. In order for him to do so, he had to quadruple down on the art of war. His fingers to his wrists, to his elbows, to his shoulders. He is the recoil king of this universe. If it wasn't for the remainder of his incredibly hard-pressed body, he wouldn't be a perfect shot. It's known to even be a perfect shot with projectiles that don't come from his firearms. Projectiles that are just random objects to the point that if you were to fight him at a teacher's conference, he could bullet a plastic knife right into your lobotomy. You've been warned. All he wants is peace, and that's a testament to him always beginning his days at his gun range. He's the king of Alzan Nation of Planet Arox, Solar System 9, Galactic Class 1-Man Army Hero, Sanctuary Hero, Dojo, and Gun Range owner of the Okanjakun House. His superpower is X-Lion. Maverick, 27 years old, of Venezuelan descent, hailing from the house of Horonzo. Say hello to your new favorite superhero. This wild card knows a lot of things, probably too many things, but the thing he does best is explode first. The first to swing has an advantage, and to make sure his swings hit their targets, he trained his entire life and still trains to this day. On the art of obliteration. It's his whole vibe, and you cannot take any fool away from him without any consequence. Because he loves a good conversation with a detainee. Negotiation and interrogation skills are ridiculous. Once he explodes somebody's mind. Ever had a lobotomy on the rocks? Well, you're about to. Because all he needs to do is explode the air around anyone's temple. And they'll understand his threat level real clear. Real instant. A psychic gave him a passive ability that allows him to fuck around and explode everything in someone's head. Except for their fears. It's detrimental. Walking around with such power. But all of hero kind loves the crazy wild card of world ending powers. He's a prince of Selzelv Nation of Planet Selzelv, Solar System 11. Galactic Class 1-Man Army Hero, Annihilation Hero, and Travel Blogger of It's Explosive Out There. His superpower is Explosion. Zermuda, 27 years old, of Jamaican descent, hailing from the house of old twice. If you ever see a spiraling cloud in your atmosphere... He's on a hunt for a villain. He has a rare ability of being able to be the eye in the sky. Can teleport just his sight from cloud to cloud if he desires. And since he can set up a spiral cloud of disastrous powers, he can move around twice. Vessel and clouds. So turn that twice into how many ever spiral clouds he summons. Those spiral clouds have the ability of shooting zenith, ice, water, and lightning rays of massive damage has been seen obliterating spaceships entering atmospheres if they happen to be a target. He'll safely grab whatever debris and however much it weighs to sit it nicely on ground or in a body of water. Big powerful magical might says the hell of gravity all the time with that magical might. That's the warning. No one, not even fellow weather wielders, want him to summon storms to cover an entire continent. Magical storms wouldn't and still don't till this day know where to begin to deal with all of the superpowers he brings to the battlefields. He's the prince of Zalora Nation of Planet Zalora, Solar System 4. Galactic Class 1-Man Army Hero, Gundam Pilot, and Sanctuary Hero. His superpower is Weather. His Gundam is named Servina Dalrock. Industry of Entertainment and Art of Celebration. Scotty Rebel and Tokyo Diva, the rich white ladies, alone with Twilight, Quality, Voxius, and Euphorium. Silver Servants, Vire, Zugasain, Gritty, and Brizaka. Protectors of Society, Clear Soldier, Chaotris, Galagos, Promesses, Arcarios, Captain Fades, Cravery, Loon Ages, 
the nigga in the mask and our grade. Rulers and royalty. Power Depot. X Viper. Handsome X. Maverick. And Zermuda. Notice which galaxies they are in compared to one another in previous folklore pieces. All over the place, right? Their star quality is impossible to ignore. Their devotion to society shouldn't be overlooked. And their protection of innocence is status quo. Year 8124 had a lot of unglorious things happen before it arrived. Yet, humankind has immortalized its species created ways of life in multitude of ways, have a vaccine for everything, still haven't lost the urge to create a solution for everything, but most importantly, found a way for us all to feel together. Cause we're all somebody in the drawn together cast, and you know it. Hope you enjoyed the folklore piece. TPB out. Mwah. Now keep it peaceful. Put your punk ass.